What are you looking up? Oh my god, people are gonna think I'm weird. It's fine. It's fine. I, I, I know. I, I, I know. Okay. I, I want to okay. Because you're supposed to say stepbrother. Yeah. But I don't get. Fluff. Just call me your brother right now. <laughs> Right. And that right. chair right there too. And that chair That's like right the BJ chair over there. <laughs> the BJ chair. Yeah. Hey, how's it going everyone? This is the Anime Man. You know, ever since I became an adult, I've always had this itching fascination towards the adult industry. Now, not in the perverted way that you might be thinking about, but more so for the secrecy revolving around the industry and the different social implications that come with the industry. Now, I've already done and uncovered a lot of stories and interviews about the Japanese adult video industry or the JAV industry, but then I thought to myself, what is it like then in the Western adult industry. Today, I've flown all the way out here to Los Angeles, California in the United States to interview and talk to a good friend of mine, Violet Myers, professional adult actress, social media titan, and occasional YouTuber. To hear from her firsthand what it's actually like to be an active member of the adult industry in the 21st century, how different it is working for a Western adult industry as opposed to the Japanese oh, adult industry, and what cross-cultural similarities she sees as being one of America's biggest adult actresses. This is her story. Hello everyone, uh, I'm with the lovely Violet Myers. Hi guys. How's it going? I'm great, how are you doing? I'm all right, I just got off a flight. I know, and you're working. <laughs> well, not grind, bro. But yeah, uh, I'm here to interview you. As everyone has seen in the title, <laughs> you are in fact Cord. Stop. Yes, an American adult entertainer. I would say probably one of the biggest cord us in America. I'm like top 10 on the corn site. The you hub. Know? The hub, yeah. The hub. Yeah, <laughs> weren't you at like two or three at one point? Was I? I'm always moving, but I'm always yeah. like in that top 10, but it's yeah. either like two, five, eight. I mean, it that's, goes up and down. That's an achievement. That is an achievement. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, suffice it to say, uh, the title is not clickbait. Uh, you are probably, in fact, America's biggest cord. We've known each other for a little bit now, but mm -hmm. this is kind of the first time we're doing a video together because I kind of wanted to, I guess, talk to you about the industry that you work in and how that might be perceived or maybe structured a little bit differently to how it works in Japan. In the past, I've done a lot of like interviews with like people in the Kith industry in Japan, like in the JAV and stuff like that, but never in America. So mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to like talk to you and like maybe discuss about like, you know, like differences in the industry and like, you know, how it is working in the industry and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, I guess like to get started, like how does one get into court strain America? Um, you know, everyone has their own different ways of how they get in. Like, mm. For example, for me, I got recruited through social media. Oh, really? Yeah, I was Well, someone just sent you a DM. Yeah, someone just sent me a message, oh. but also I was directly saying I wanted to be a court. Or I want to be a court while, right. I was, while I was in school. Right, right. And then I got recruited through an agency, mm. like a legit licensed agency. That's yeah. how you know it's legit when it's licensed. Yeah, yeah. They told me to fly on over to Florida and then that's how I got started. But usually people get recruited as like a model mm. or they'll post on social media or they'll send out applications, you know, like a yeah, job yeah, application, yeah. but through a legit license agent. Like how do they find those like applications? Like Google. Just, just Google it? License. Court. Agencies so so how do you tell the difference between one that is licensed and one that's not? One will have the actual license and it'll say it's licensed. Like you can't oh, say you're okay. licensed. Well, you can't say you're licensed if you're not licensed. That's illegal. Yeah, right, right, so right. So that's how you do it. Okay. Or yeah. jobs. There's a website called yeah. and a lot of my friends have gotten recruited through there. Okay, yeah, because I always assumed it was like, there was like Craigslist ads or like, Craigslist like too. that. Yeah? There is Craigslist okay, okay. too, but I think that's like, in the past, yeah. I have tried to look on Craigslist when I was looking to be a court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On Craigslist, but mm. there was sketchy ads, so oh, I'm glad yeah. I never. I mean, you just described it. Craigslist in general. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it can get pretty sketchy. It's I a feel. red flag website. For yeah. Sure. Okay, so that's interesting because, like, you, you said that. So you were doing social media just casually as as a student, and you wanted to be a court. Um, mm -hmm. what what made you want to be court? I was a webcam girl while I was in. college college because oh, that was okay. helping me afford, you know, books mm -hmm. and paying for tuition. Those and then, student loans, bro. Yeah, they're expensive. Yeah. So I was doing that. So I was in somewhat of like the adult industry already. Okay. What made me want to do it was obviously I wanted to grow my room, mm. my, my fluff at the time mm. and have more people come and 
get more money and become a popular webcam girl. Mm. But then I got recruited because mm. I wanted to be wanted to be a Court. star. And then I flew to Florida, did a couple scenes, and I loved the industry. Mm. I loved my experience, and it made me fall in love with that. So that's why I decided to stay and do it instead right, of webcaming. Right. And how long have you been doing it now? Five years this Five year. Five years, mm -hmm. damn. Half right. a decade now. Hell yeah. What would you say is like the average time that a, a girl or a guy is in the industry for? I would say the range is three to six months. Once you get past that. Oh, that short? Once you get past that, oh, oh you're you're good. As long as you stay sane, right. you stay healthy, and you legitimately want to do this because you love it, then what, you can why, have a long career. Why do you think the, the span is so short? It's like hot pies. They come and go. You uh, know, there's always that new girl that people look for. Right. It's really the personality and the performance that really keeps the fans engaged. Right, right. And more so than just like, oh, she's like a pretty girl. Well, that's like a really yeah. I like. Yeah, yeah, and then for guys, it's a little bit shorter because their performance is the banana. So yeah. like a lot of the times they can't stay hard. Mm. They get intimidated by a huge camera crew. Mm. The lifespan is like three to six months. Right, yeah. right. So, I mean, if you think of it that way, five years is an achievement. It is a long, yeah. People are calling me an OG now. <laughs> like. Oh my god, I never thought I would be an Old OG. school court. So. Yeah, well before OnlyFans took over. Oh yeah, true, true. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that because that was going to be my next question. Because like, you know, obviously you have an OnlyFans mm -hmm. um, and I assume you're making pretty good bank out of it. Yeah. As I think a lot of court. Uh, and mm -hmm. I've noticed that that has become a trend of like, there's there's two trends of like, obviously court does that are currently in the industry creating an OnlyFans and like mm -hmm. kind of doing both at the same time. And then there are people who are like, well, I want to do yeah. stuff, but I don't necessarily want to be in the industry. Whereas I can just kind of self-produce. Yeah. And so they do it on OnlyFans, right? Yeah, they're called content creators. Content. <laughs> I guess uh, yeah, yeah, because they know. Yeah, just like me for real. I guess like one question I want to ask is: Does the court industry see OnlyFans as like a threat, or do they see it as like, oh, they're just like boosting the, I guess the the positive mindset of women being like yeah. really open and like you know uh, active. I guess I want to say it's a mixture of the both. Uh. Um, because it's a, I want to say it's like a positive and a negative. Mm. Because the positive is yes, a lot of these girls don't have to depend on going on set as much and making one paycheck and then you don't get paid for the rest of your life mm. anymore. You know, only get paid that once, t that one time. A lot of companies are losing. I feel like we're not as active. There's not mm. that many girls that want to shoot for mainstream anymore yeah. because OnlyFans has taken over. Mm. So it, it, it tends to like mess up for directors and producers because then there'll be a girl that can the day of mm. and if it fucks it up for them versus mm. like the girl can just go at home and make the money herself you know but it's like it's a positive and negative mm. I feel like a lot of the industry in the beginning was accepted towards it but now it's like do you want to be a, a mainstream star or do you want to be like an OnlyFans star? Mm. And a lot of girls are going more towards OnlyFans, like especially the big name girls, they're starting to quit doing shoots for companies and oh, studios really? and they're just sticking to just producing their own content. Hmm. So it's like a mixture of both. I think just like the pure existence of OnlyFans, just from my perspective, is like, a positive and a negative yeah, at the I same time so in so. general because it's like obviously women now are becoming more open and you know being like more yeah. open and you know I say all the more power to them you know mm -hmm. like you know you do whatever the hell you want it's your body but I feel at the same time there's also these like stigmas that are mm -hmm. born out of the whole OnlyFans thing do you think these like stigmas are like kind of born as a result of like just OnlyFans being a thing or do you think it's persisted since like the days of court? It's been since the days of court. Even uh. before OnlyFans, I remember people would tell me, oh, your kids are going to be mad mm. and sad. You're going to get bullied. So this was even before OnlyFans for do, sure. Do you, how do you f find those stigmas as someone in the industry? I don't pay attention to them because that there's stigmas in every industry, I yeah. feel like, in whatever field you are. I just happen to be more open with my body mm. and yeah. So I feel like it's an easy target for a lot of people to come harass me and mm. you know give me those assumptions. Like what are they? With the assumptions. Assumptions, yeah. Yeah, that's something I can't you know argue with. Mm. But also I feel like we're moving towards a society where people are starting to accept it and accept it now. Mm. And this new generation is starting to see it as like legitimate work yeah. instead of just like someone that just opens their legs on camera. Yeah, I, I feel like it's interesting because it's kind of like, you know, what you said definitely does exist as well, but I feel like now it's just become like 
two extremes. It's you're either extremely like pro OnlyFans, pro court, where it's like this is good for the women, this is good for the men who want to be in that industry. It's good to be yeah. active, and then you have like the extreme on the complete opposite side where it's like just ban all porn ban all women should not be doing this yeah. blah 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 and it's like at that point there's like nothing you can do about it mm -mm. especially someone in the industry like you just it's like if you enjoy being in the industry then you just stay in the industry and that's what makes you happy kind of thing you know yeah i feel like with this industry the adult industry i feel like i felt more accepted with these people than i have with people who i worked normal jobs with mm. um because they see a different side of you than besides just having yeah. also you're open you know mm. you can have an open mind i feel like most of us have an open mind and most people are closed-minded i'd say though like one big thing with you especially that i feel is quite different from other people in the industry is that you are for one very active on social media mm -hmm. um and you have a youtube channel and i feel that is very rare for <laughs> yeah. someone in your position. Um, why did you want to be one of those people who are like, I'm going to be active on social media, I'm going to start a YouTube channel, I'm going to make videos? I've, I've been vlogging since I was in high school, so mm. it was nothing new to me. Oh, I've okay. always wanted to be a YouTuber. Yeah. I just felt like I didn't have that platform to do it. Right. And I've always been told, like, every time I meet someone, they're like, you have such like a cool personality, it's mm. so relatable. So I felt like I had the confidence mm. to actually start a YouTube channel. Yeah. And a lot of people find what I do interesting because mm. it's like you never really meet an adult entertainer that wants to be open about their job most girls I know or just people I, I, in general they're like I don't want to talk about work don't like talk to me about anything that's just work yeah and me I feel like it's cool when you meet Corn. Or because it's not like it's kind of like a unicorn you don't really just meet <laughs> Of course. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like you have so many questions because like I was that person on the other side yeah. before. When I was in school, I did research on the adult entertainment and I wish I would have been friends with Corn to ask them these questions. Mm. So when people ask me these questions, I'm completely open because it's such a positive and safe environment mm. that I feel like I want to spread that awareness because mm. I know a lot of people assume negative. Yeah. But it's the complete opposite. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's like totally this you know current situation yeah. right now right like it's like it's like <laughs> you're a friend of mine who's in the industry and i have so many questions i wanted to ask you about it and so that's why we're doing this video and i feel like as well that kind of curiosity is born maybe because not many people talk openly about the industry mm -hmm. and maybe there's like I don't know, maybe mysterious isn't the right word, but like a lot of stuff is like kind of hidden out of the limelight. Yeah. Maybe on purpose or maybe mm -hmm. just because there's no one, there hasn't been anyone no. that's like open enough to talking about it and stuff like that, right? Because I've seen like your other like interviews and stuff like that and like you being on podcasts and like you're pretty open with what you talk about in the <laughs> yeah. industry, which I feel is very rare, you know? Completely open. I feel like most interviews I do, a lot of people are like surprised at yeah. how open I am because they're like, are you sure you want answers? Like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Like, it's okay. like, is she allowed to say that or? <laughs> yeah, because I don't, because if, if people really pay attention to it, it's never nothing negative. I don't mm. say we're getting this and that, there's drugs. No, it's never like that. It's mm. all consensual. We all do paper legals. We have to do a video consenting before and after. Yeah. Like making sure that we're completely sober and that we're in the right mind state to even do this. So, so why do you think then those negative connotations do exist? Is it because maybe just people are just making their imaginations go yeah. wild and being like, oh, it's probably like, a slimy industry behind the scenes and all that kind of stuff? I want to say just by thinking about when I wasn't mm. it just people would assume because people are having unprotected yeah. maybe that's why they're like mm. oh you're having yeah. all these people and it's they don't understand we get tested once a week maybe even twice mm. sometimes um, it's just like people are just uneducated that's it mm. you know and I also feel like a lot of people don't talk about it so openly so that's why people just have these assumptions and negative assumptions about what the industry is right. but it's the complete opposite. Are there actually any like negative aspects to the industry that you've seen now that you've been in it? There is cases where there'll be people who get in the industry with malicious intentions mm. where they're obviously creating these content, but not because they love it, but because they think it's a get a gateway to Fluff. all these corn field. All and right. so then they end up being like abusers uh. and it's a rare situation. I feel like most of the time, when I'm on set, on a professional set, everyone's so nice, mm. like too nice. Cause they'll like, sometimes they'll be like, are you sure? Do you need any water? Like, it's yeah. like very positive environment, right. you know? And like, I think that a lot of people don't know that. Cause I wish like we were able to film like on a set so you mm. can see that for yeah. yourself, but it's, 
not what people think. And I wish mm. I could explain it better, but I wish people could live in my head to see <laughs> it. But, um. I guess then in that aspect, like what's one thing you wish you knew about the industry before you went into it? You know what I wish I knew? That once you do this, you, you, you kind of like, you can't go back to a normal life. Right. Basically. Because there's times where I feel like maybe I should have just done YouTube, mm. not like, what I do mm. but then I think about like when I go on a set I'm like you know what I really do love this and this is you know it just happened to be my path mm. but I wish I would have known the consequences of like once you're on the internet it's there forever yeah that's why I encourage people before they do it to really think about it because you're really because even if you do a one scene it can blow up and you know mm. I've had people from my school come back to me and like be like oh I know you you're you know, you're violet. And even when I go outside, I don't have, I, I have anxiety just because I feel like they've seen me at my most vulnerable. Mm. And I signed up for that. I'm okay with that. Mm. But you know, I wish that I would, I wish I would have known that beforehand. Like been a little bit more prepared for it. Be more prepared for it. Yeah. But I feel like now, right now, I'm completely fine. Right. And I have that strong mindset. Yeah. And I have pepper spray. So <laughs> I feel safe. So but. don't think of any shit. Basically. No. Yeah. I like it. Do you get a lot of people coming up to you in the public? Yeah, I think every time I leave my house, I at least have like one or two people like ask for a picture. So, okay, because like that's super interesting because it's like, I also get recognized on the streets as well, but I feel how my fans interact with me <laughs> on the streets and how your fans interact yeah. with you on the streets is very different. Oh, for sure. Like, how do you describe like an average fan of yours on the streets? Who like comes up to you? Are they nervous? It's either or. So it's right. either they're super confident or they're just really shy, like little nerdy guys. Cause the thing is like, I think that's why I'm so popular too, is because a you lot of- You appeal to the nerds. Yeah, you that's do. my community. Yeah, but also sure. like, I'm just like the nerdy yeah. girl. I think yeah. that's like, if they were in my position too, they would be the same way. Which, you know, I think on the internet <laughs> nowadays is like the goal that like yeah. I think I think everyone on the internet wishes like oh I want to I want a nerdy girl who's also sexy as yeah. uh, like they, mm -hmm. they want the the two worlds like slammed together right recently I went to anime expo and I was like filming a YouTube video but I no actually no this I went two separate days mm. I went with my family mm. I wish that some of my fans were like <laughs> cool because it's cool if they tell me oh I love that scene where you did this and that but when I'm with my like <laughs> brothers and cousins and mom they're like yo that scene where you were wearing the hooters outfit i was like oh my god yo no, that, don't first, tell that first that first long that you yeah, did you that she was tight in front of like my mom it's like <laughs> Maybe my mom doesn't want to hear that, but like that's yeah. kind of my fans. Or they're like, did you watch the new episode of Jujutsu Kaisen? Yeah. Or like, it's either or. It's right, either, right. I love your movies. Or did you watch that anime episode? <laughs> what are you reading right now? What's your favorite anime? Yeah, it's always yeah. the two. It's right. never in the middle, but yeah. That's my fan base. Going back to uh, what you said earlier about like, um, you know, you find it a little bit, I guess, not weird per se, but a little bit strange to watch, I guess, court videos because, you know, a lot of the times you know a lot of those people. Yeah, my coworkers. They're, they're your coworkers. <laughs> is that is that still weird for you? Sometimes, yeah, because yeah. like, especially when people that I used to watch yeah. and I meet them, I'm like, this is kind of weird because I used to watch your videos. So I'm like, like we're friends now. Yeah. But my friends, they laugh, they like it. They're like, they yeah. don't think it's weird that I say that. But yeah. it's, to me, it's a little weird because it's like, I've seen you naked. <laughs> but my friend, like one of yeah. my best friends, he watches my court and then he like will critique it. He'll be like, yo, this scene was fire. <laughs> but I find it weird if I do it to my friends. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of the same way. Like I can't watch not not core videos obviously uh, like when it comes to, like youtube videos like if i'm really good friends with someone i find it really hard to watch their videos not yeah. because like their quality has gone down or anything like that but it's just like i could watch <laughs> your videos or i could just message you and we can hang out yeah and i think i'd much rather do the latter mm -hmm. you know so it's it's kind of weird how that works but um this might be a bit of a personal question so feel free to not answer if you're not comfortable with it would you say that court has affected your yeah. life court has if anything improved my yeah. life really? i feel more confident with my especially because what i do on camera mm. i want to repeat it in my personal life mm. but i will say it also kind of has ruined it a little bit because now i feel like when i do have yeah. on camera it's like oh i have to open up i have to do this position mm. now it's like it's kind of in my head if i have yeah. my personal life, i'm like fuck i should have recorded this <laughs> So it's That's kinda, content right there. Yes, so it's like, <laughs> damn it, no, I'm like, save your nut, put it back, let's do it, and let's <laughs> film it again. So that's literally how I feel, like, yeah. 
cord. It's ruined it, but I don't think mm. that's ruined it, but I feel like now it's become work and stuff. I mean, I feel like it's not so much cord. It's ruined it. That's just like content creator brain that's yeah. ruined it, you know? Okay, then, Where yeah. it's like, I could do this one thing or I could do it on camera. Yeah. You know, and make money off it. You know? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think I think every YouTuber runs into that problem for sure. See, because that's interesting, because I feel like for a lot of people, perhaps who are maybe not as like well versed or, you know, understanding of the industry and the people in the industry, I think if I were to ask that same question, I think a lot of people would be like, oh, it surely must, right? Because mm -hmm. they have yeah. for a job. And you know, if you're doing something for a job, then you don't want to like do think your... about that or oh, you know, okay. do it in your personal life. Right? If anything, I feel like I get yeah, yeah. on offset because it's like on camera it's not like as real as i want it to be mm. because they'll stop in one position right. and they'll be like all right two minutes of that two minutes of this two minutes of that yeah. versus in my personal life i can do it as long as i want yeah yeah if anything when i come home from set, I'm like i want to have legit yeah. like no camera right. sometimes just legit. personal <laughs> like hugging each other there is some incidents where i'm like i i can't have yeah. right now because mm. i am open mm. and it hurts, especially when I do like extreme scenes, like a DP, mm. it's like a double. Willy, Willy. So mm. one's, one's in like, yeah. in the door. Mm. and I'll like mentally take like two days off mm. where I don't want to think about, yeah. don't look at, yeah. I stay off my phone just because I just did like an extreme thing. You did like a concentrated version of it, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like basically like, Cords are like yeah. athletes almost. So there'll be incidents where I like, fuck, I can't like yeah. have, Willy. but when you have a partner that understands, mm. It makes it easy. Mm. So obviously, you know, although you've been doing court for five years now, which is a long time, uh, you haven't done everything that that industry has to offer, right? Um, when it comes to like, say for example, certain shoots, mm -hmm. um, are there have there been some where, you know, in the five years where you're just like, yeah, maybe not. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not personally down for that or I'm not ready for that or anything like that. Of course, yeah. Mm. Like even me, I just did my first, Gorge. last year mm. and it was a lot because for most girls like their agents will be like do it yeah. for seed and some girls are okay with it mm. and for my career i wanted to wait a little bit longer till i felt a little bit more comfortable to like practice because it's not as easy as people think it is yeah you have to clean yourself you can't eat for like basically a day because mm. you have you can't poop on set like mm. there's incidents where sometimes girls will poop on camera because of it i chose i strategic i strategically sorry strategic <laughs> strategically <laughs> i had a brain fart and i strategically waited to do all of this until mm. I was mentally prepared to do it. Mm. Because once you do it, you can't go back. A lot of people are gonna consistently want that. And they're gonna want more of it as well, right? Yeah, yeah. like even me, I just did my first, yeah. then I did my first Willy. right after, and mm. now people want to see me do a deep. Willy, Willy. Yeah, it's like mm. you can never really satisfy everyone. Yeah, it's, um, I feel it as well, it's just gonna like keep escalating. Like you do that next thing, it's just gonna keep getting bigger yeah. and bigger and bigger and bigger, yeah. And that's why I feel like I've paced myself out mm. For a good run too. Mm. I feel like a lot of people, luckily I have a supportive fan base where they're, anything I do, they're gonna support. Yeah. But for the industry, sometimes they're like, your top, your your clicker, your clock is ticking mm. and you need to do something else because mm. then people are gonna get bored. Mm. So sometimes it could feel like you're being pressured a little bit, mm. especially when your fan base is kind of pressuring you to do these things that you don't normally do in your normal life. Right, right. But I feel like you do whatever you're comfortable with. Mm. No one really forces you, it's all up to you. Mm. And that's what I love. Mm. You know, nowadays, especially with agents, they're like, if you want to do it, do it. I'm not going to force you. Right. Um, I can't speak for everyone, but my agent is the same way. Mm. Yeah. If you were a dude, right, and uh -huh. you could sleep with any member of the industry, who would it be? Angela White. Right? Yeah, just because like I've shot with her, but like girl, girl, mm. but I would like to be a guy and, and fluff her. <laughs> what, what makes her different in your mind? Her accent, she has, she's Australian, she's Australian, Australian yeah. accent, but also too, she has these blue eyes mm. and like when you stare at her or like when, whenever I see her performance, it's just so enticing. Like that, there's a reason why she's like top three. Yeah. So her, I would choose her or wow. myself. Cause I want to know <laughs> how good am I? Because <laughs> I hear this all the time. Yeah. So I have my own fight. So I want to, yeah. you know, I want to have a willy and do that yeah you know? but just them that but, yeah. you see that's what that's what everyone needs they need the confidence to say you know what if i was the opposite yeah. 
fluff. So, Honestly, I would. That's, yeah. That's the confidence everyone needs. There's in their this quote they're like, I want to fluff because I want to see the hype. <laughs> I want to see the hype. <laughs> <laughs> I would say myself, and then yeah. <laughs> when it comes to cord acting, all right, and like yeah. just script writing, do these like script writers? Do they purposely make the scripts funny? Yeah, they do. Yeah, because they, I don't think I've ever seen a scene chord starts off with like, a, you know, a, a setting skit kind of thing that I haven't laughed at. Yeah. <laughs> you know, either it's because like the writing is just like, what the hell? Or like the acting is like, what the hell? Uh-huh. I did one where recently it was like a very serious one, but yeah. it was kind of funny because like the stalker was in my house oh, yeah. and he was sniffing my panties <laughs> and like I caught him and then I had to like scream. They had to do multiple cuts of it because yeah. I just like was not serious. Because <laughs> even the actor was like, I'm sorry if I'm being weird. I'm yeah. like, no, it's okay. You're, that's your job. Yeah, yeah, you're acting. Yeah. yeah, or there's incidents where like the stepsister, like this, like the that stuff. Yeah. I'm not really into the yeah. play. There's this one guy particularly I want to shout out because he was like, it technically you're not supposed to say you're my brother, you're my sister, mm. because you're supposed to say stepbrother. Yeah, but I don't give a f call me your brother right now. <laughs> I w so I was like, brother, you're not supposed to do this, and then. You're supposed to say stepbrother. He's like, just say stepbrother once, and then the rest of it just call me. It's brother. implied. Yeah, so that's probably like weird too, because I'm like, oh I God. I pray to God he is an only child. Like I I pray to I God. I pray to God too. I pray to God he is he an does, only like, child. He does like the stepdad, stepbrother, oh, all that shit. God. But he's like popular on on the hub. Really? People it's... really like that stuff. People really like that stuff. You know, the, the, I guess you know, there's a whole reason why. A whole was created out yeah. of it. Yeah. I haven't done that laundry st stuff yet. The stuck um, in a washing machine? I, I don't know if I have that in me to do that. But there is like funny concepts where people will do like, especially when it's the holidays, mm. like Halloween mm. parodies are funny. Like, like what, do you, what do you do for the Halloween parodies? So I got recently asked to do this alien movie. Okay. Where I have to basically get abducted by aliens and then I have to like lay on this spaceship, but like on this cold table naked and just get fucked by aliens <laughs> wait well were the guys like dressed They're up gonna as dress aliens? up as aliens <laughs> and my agent was like i don't know if you should do this because there's gonna be a lot of slime and oh god yeah so it's like corn really go a bunch of ways honestly what's the weirdest offer you've ever gotten that yeah. alien one. the alien one only because i feel like i'd be really scared because now that aliens are confirmed yeah <laughs> I was like, you're gonna tell me to do that now that aliens are confirmed? No, I'm not gonna do that. Aliens are gonna watch that and be like, that's a great idea. Yeah, let's abduct her <laughs> yeah, and let's then let's actually her. do that. Yeah. No, I'm not doing that. So that's probably like the craziest thing I've been asked to do. Would you say that being in the court industry is a lucrative option? Yes and no. In the beginning, yeah. obviously you're getting paid more than you do when you work like a minimum wage job. Mm. But then when you realize it's like a one-time payment, oh my God, I'm only getting paid $800 for this one scene. Right. And my rent is this much. Mm. And I have to still pay for my clothes, my lingerie, get tested. It, it adds up. So for some people it can be like, cause they're working so much, they can afford it. Mm. But like someone, when I started, I was only shooting like maybe one or two scenes a month. Mm. That was nothing. The popular, the more popular you get, the more work you get and the higher your rate goes. Mm. But obviously in the beginning, it's not like that. And male performers don't get paid shit. Right. They, and they work the most. Like mm. some of them work two to three scenes a day because they need to. <laughs> yeah. How the fuck? <laughs> they're superheroes, and man. They're built diff. Yeah, they're, real, they're, they're really built diff. Dude. I think that's why I think I appreciate OnlyFans and I... Mm because you don't have to like be on set for 12 hours a day and only make this check versus mm. when you're producing your own content, you're making lifetime more money. Yeah. Would you say that's one of the big reasons why a lot of court are starting to like mm -hmm. do OnlyFans stuff like that? Yeah, because people think we get royalties, mm. but we don't. Really? No, it's oh, wow. the companies that make all of that money. Right. It's rare, I think there are some people that do, mm. like, but that was before a long time ago where right. they had contracts that they'll still make money from the scenes they don't, but we don't. It's unfortunate because then when we pay taxes, it's mm. so much money. I yeah, bet. and then we have to pay an agent fee, like 15 to yeah. 10, 10 to 15 percent, sometimes even 20. And it's like it adds up and then you're left with like how much money and yeah. I just did this. I guess like what would you say is like the general reaction? What was the general reaction 
uh, amongst like your friends and family when you decided to go into the industry? Um, this is a good question because I know a lot of people want to know this. Because um, I think the general consensus is like, oh, I bet your parents were disappointed and your friends were like, what, you're going to do that? You know, yeah. don't do that. And we're like, maybe there was like a lot of negative connotation around it. But how was it in your case? It was more of my mom just making sure I'm okay and I'm mm. safe. You know, she was like, okay, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. My situation's different than other people's, for yeah. sure. I've met a lot of my friends and they've gotten disowned. Mm. Their, fa their family doesn't want to talk to them. For the most case, I think a lot of people are accepting. Mm. They just don't ask. Like my yeah. mom won't be like, she'll be like, how was work? But not like in a sense where like, like give me details, <laughs> give me details. But she just wants to know like, hey, are you OK? Are yeah. you safe? You know, mm. like you're not hurt or anything. Mm. But my family was pretty open minded. My grandma was the only one that was kind of like disappointed mm. because she is a Catholic. She believes in Flip. poor marriage. Right. Like she got married and then had my mom and mm. my aunt. So like it was a little bit harder for her to swallow because I'm the oldest. and. Mm. They ex I was in college, so they expected me to get my PhD in clinical psychology mm. and do that. But I think now they're everyone's more accepting, especially my grandma. But it is kind of like still hard for them a little bit when they see me on social media and they're like, oh, she's a court. Yeah. You know, but they know the real me mm. and they know it's my job. Mm. So for the most part, they're just they've always been like, just please be safe, you know, that's it. I mean, I feel just from hearing that, like you definitely got the much better end of the bargain, you know? Like, yeah. Because again, like you were saying, like, I'm sure there's a lot of people who just like- Disown them. Yeah, get disowned or like, you know, all of, you know, all the bridges get burnt or, you know, whatever it might be. And they feel very like isolated. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure like for those people in the industry, like that really it's like fucks you need them your up. family yeah. because it's like a mental thing when you go in this industry it's mm. it's very hard especially when you're overly exposed mm. you feel like you might need your family so you can feel a little bit humble a little yeah. bit you know about everything mm. and bring you back to like your roots mm. and i think that's why a lot of my fans think i'm really like humble and sweet mm. is because i have my family they're the ones that like keep me grounded yeah versus some people they're like they're on their own and they have grudges because they don't have anyone that loves them at yeah. home, you know, but yeah. I just got really lucky. Yeah, no, definitely. All right, <laughs> hypothetical. Oh, well, actually not hypothetical, probably many times in your life. You're on the hub. Okay. You've clicked on the search bar. What are you looking at? Oh my God, people are gonna think I'm weird. It's fine, it's fine. I, I, I know, I, I know, okay, I, 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 okay, I, I genuinely it. don't think there is a, such a thing as a normal search on the hub. Okay, true. That okay. doesn't exist. I either look for, okay, there's three okay. that I look for. <laughs> okay. Um, off brand melon scissor. In. <laughs> okay. Um, Based. Big melon. Okay. And three people. Amateur. Why? Okay. <laughs> off brand. Okay. Hit. Off brand melon. <laughs> Makes sense. I think everyone is looking for that stuff. The lesbian. But yeah. lesbian. Yeah. So no Specific. like no like regular straight. No lesbian. And really? Yeah. Is that with off brand? Um. Well, obviously when I watch it for personal, yes. Mm. But when I do my research, I'm watching everything. Many people, Willie, Fluff. All that. Yeah. But um. For personal, yeah, I'm looking up specific lesbian. I oh, think because yeah. I've had enough, I've seen enough Willie <laughs> un unsolicited that sure. I want to see like sure. just just too hot anime characters. Fluff. Fair enough. And then you say melon. Yeah, I'm a, obviously a could tell I like melon. Who doesn't? I know. Well, Who doesn't? you don't be surprised. Some people don't like melon. They're like more and more cake guy. I mean, okay, look, those people exist, yeah. sure, but there is not a single dude out there or girl out there who sees some tig old bitties and is just like, I will not allow that. <laughs> like, like there is there is not a single sane person not. who is doing that. And if they are, then I'm sorry for your loss. Yeah, but melon. And um, amateur. Three people. Amateurs. Yeah, like, you like the amateur stuff. Like you could tell someone just like met and like they're fluff courting <laughs> and posted on cornfield a two minute clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I, f I find like every now and then I find these like amateur videos where it's just like it's not even hot. It's just like cool. Yeah. To watch where it's just like oh this is like an actual <laughs> snippet out of someone's life that I'm yeah, like looking into I like and like that. I feel like I I shouldn't be watching this but You're it's a publicly available. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, my search is pretty interesting. 
interesting because a lot of people would assume different. Mm. I mean, like, again, like in this day and age, <laughs> I don't think there's such thing as a normal search, right? Like that, no. I feel everyone has that like one thing where they're like, I have zero explanation as to why I like it. I just do. Who, who would you say is your favorite male? Corn. Ooh, okay. Um, uh, may, maybe those two are different. But. No, no, I have, I think I have it. Um, his name's Dread. Okay. <laughs> his name already is like... Dread. Um, he's like a 14 inch, huge. He's long. God and, damn. And I, I think he's like one of my favorites because it's just like, it looks like... Off brand. <laughs> It's it, not real. It reminds you of the monster. Off brand. I, I want to say, yeah, because he has like a monster. Willy. So I, that's why he's one of my favorites. I mean, 14 inches. <laughs> it's not even that's real. That's something. That's <laughs> Christ. So, but yeah, he's also a great performer too. Mm. So, and he just knows how to film and stuff. So that's why have he's you, Have you worked him. with him before? I have worked with him. How was seeing that the first time? <laughs> Scary. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> I bet, like I was in, like, in the monster like, I'm about to be split in half. Like. Yeah, no, I felt like that. But he's like a very nice person, but mm. also the way he shoots is like a legit movie. So I think right. that's why he's like one of my favorite. Cool. I'll have to check out. <laughs> it's long. <laughs> it's not even real. For, re for research. I don't know how someone like can get all that oh, blood. I gotta, I gotta look it up now. How do you how do you spell his name? Here, here you go. Um, you could kind of see the video. What the? F hey yo, that's not real. That that is real. Bro, that's like. <laughs> That's like the size of my forearm, dude. I wish I could get That's he insane. doesn't take pictures of it. He doesn't need to. His shit is in frame whether you like it or not. Yeah. <laughs> like it's it's, it's unavoidable. It's not even in the picture, no. honestly. <laughs> 0.5 is gonna just make it look bigger. Um, what would you say out of all of the shoots that you've done, what would you say is like your favorite position that you like doing? Um, I wanna say when it comes to my work, there's like this missionary I could do, but I could like you know when you like li you lift your weights and you go like that. Which one's this one called? Like the like like this weight? I forgot what these are called. Fuck. Oh. But you have like a weight right here. Okay. And I do that in missionary. So right. instead of like laying down straight, I'll yeah. like lift my leg, like my whole body up in right. missionary, and then I'll, like I'll push back, and then my my melon will be slapping my face. <laughs> And a lot of people like that. Okay. And then another one would probably be like, obviously, Willy. Oops. That's like right. what I'm known for. It, did, did you like go into the scene with like, this is gonna be like my hook? My finish move, yeah. yeah. One of the main reasons why I got into this mm. was because there was this guy that I was seeing mm. and he told me that I should do Corn. because I'm good at it. He suggested it and I put a, it put a spark in my head. And then when I joined, I was like, okay, I was, I guess I was meant for this. Like, shit, he was right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, he was right. Yeah. Cause like I have like a lot of saliva. So mm. it's like, it's perfect for movies. Right, right. Would you say that's like the one thing that like a lot of your fans like kind of always look forward to in your scenes? Where yeah. it's like, where is that scene? Where is Willie? You know what I'm saying? They like other positions, but those are my personal favorites right. to do. What What's like the one thing that your fans love? They like doggy, cause I have a big cake, but I hate that. You don't like it? No, only because it kind of hurts a little bit. Really? Yeah, cause oh. my, I guess I kind of like fucked my cervix up. So like now it's like this way instead of it being straight. Right, right. So like when I go do doggy, like it looks good, but it doesn't feel as good as mm. it should be. I think cause I did, yeah. oh, it kind of fucked up. Oh, the, I see. Yeah, it's like this now, I don't know. Do you enjoy doing the yeah. or do you just kind of do it because it's like, this is like fan service. Fan service. Yeah. Yeah, cause in my personal life, I like to eat, so. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> when you do, yeah. you kind of have to not eat. Right, right. Like what, imagine you do Taco Bell and then you do that, like you're gonna have crumbsies on your- Cake, Willy. You know what I mean? No, I mean, I was about to say some dudes like that, but- I've uh, had a guy tell me I'll pay you $10,000 to take a shit on, like to take a <laughs> shit on me. Did you accept? No. Yeah, well, okay, Because he wanted to film it and I was like, I don't want to have that on the internet. No, no. Nah, Even if it wasn't a film, it's like, Mate, I have standards, come on. Yeah, now. there's some girls that do it or they'll do puking content and that's just like a little too much for me. Yeah. It's also just like niche content to watch as well. So it's like, uh, yeah, it's not really know. something that could be like, this is gonna make me the big box because you know. 
I everyone's going to be clamoring to watch that scene or anything. Yeah, I think it's more of like a taboo thing, I feel mm. like. Um, so we're filming currently in uh, your studio. Yeah, this is one of my shoot locations where right. I shoot not just like my OnlyFans stuff, but yeah. I shoot my YouTube stuff too. Okay. Um, how many people, <laughs> now that I'm just realizing, how many people have you done, like how many scenes have you done on this couch? I can't have give you? you a number, but yeah. I will say that these are just recently cleaned. Okay. Because a Good. girl actually bled where you were sitting right now. What? Because she did a scene on her period. <laughs> So like legitimately where you're sitting, someone just like, 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 let, like, 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 like around right here. Lovely. <laughs> and there used to be a lot of yeah. and sweat stains on this couch too. <laughs> and it had a certain like BO smell, but yeah. I cleaned this. Okay. It's all sanitary, even the carpet. I had the, the carpet cleaner guy. I didn't tell him. But, yeah. Um, what, what was the carpet cleaner guy's reaction <laughs> being like, hey, yo, what's that musk? I just like room? lied saying that I do Airbnb. <laughs> Um, but maybe... and, a, and a tenant just got really wacky in this room. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much every part of this house, mm. um, someone has fluff. Has fluff. Da yeah, because I, I noticed there was like a bed over in that room as well. <laughs> And yeah. I'm sure a lot gets up in that room. <laughs> and right that chair there. right there too. And that chair That's like the there. BJ chair over there. <laughs> the BJ chair. Yeah, because it's like a, a like a, a leg chair, and right. it's like perfect because you can like film like a good POV scene. <laughs> I thought, oh my God. and then those bar chairs, you know, yeah. are great for like standing up. Fluff. Yeah. I filmed my cooking show right here and the... I love how it went from a girl bled on this couch to, I, I cook over there. Yeah. <laughs> All in the same room. So you were telling me about the uh, this consent form that you guys have to like mm -hmm. sign right before you do the shoot. Um, what are the like what what's like the the, the go tos that every person goes through when starting a scene or when they're about to go into a scene? So I want to just give this the best description I can give everyone sure. and the audience of what it really is like. Just to imagine. Be on a cord. Imagine okay. In your head. So you're gonna walk in. Obviously, yeah. they're gonna take your social security, your ID, or whatever you have to mm -hmm. two forms of ID. Okay. To verify that you're over the age of 18. Right. So then you're gonna sit down, you're gonna do your hair and makeup. There's a professional hair and makeup artist there. Mm -hmm. Depending on the company you work for, you're either gonna have to bring your own wardrobe or they'll have they'll provide wardrobe for you. Right. And then right after your hair and makeup is done, you're gonna go to the side, you're gonna do your legals. And that is like a DocuSign or paperwork where you do like a W9 where you're fill out your paperwork for taxes because yeah. we do pay taxes here. Pay taxes. Even though we do court. We do pay taxes here. <laughs> yes, they take our money too. Yeah. And then we do the um, the consent form, which is like our first, last name, mm. social security, our date of birth. And then we pull out a newspaper and then the model release form. Okay. And they'll do your bunny ears. Mm. And then they'll do bunny ears with their ID and social security. Okay. And that it's a whole process why, before. Why, why, hold on, why the bunny ears? It's called bunny years because you put your social security card right here and then your id right here oh like that yeah okay, and you right, take a picture right. yeah yeah and then you do the same thing with the paperwork and your id right. and vice versa and then you do a consent video where you're talking about you're not under the age of 18 you're over 18 yeah. you're not under any like you're not under the influence alcohol, yeah. of all drugs and alcohol you're consenting to filming fluff fluff so all of that mm. and then you take pictures which mm. are called pretty girls so they're like the shots that you see on instagram that are the safer work content right right and then you do fluff those where it's like you have fluff really they're just pictures of you having fluff but you're not really having fluff so they're just like there's penetration but they don't move they're not moving right, right just for the dvd covers right right you get your do your girly stuff you know a lot of us we douche mm. which is like you put some cold water up there and you clean out all mm. the cream every scent you mm. have and then you go get ready to have fluff or you'll do the acting first and then you have fluff right. and then you leave you do the exit out and then that's it and that's a scene done and how long does that whole process take usually or like an all-day ordeal or 9 to 9 a.m to 5 p.m or uh Jeez. 9 a.m to 9 p.m depending on oh, what wow. kind of movie it is but what takes the longest is the set Right. Moving the set, getting every little detail. The table has to be this way, the lighting, the everything. Yeah. It's it takes forever to have I mean, sex. You you are shooting a movie, you know. Yeah. A, a, you know, an where, adult movie. An adult, yeah. Although it is an adult movie, it's still a movie, right? It so is, it's still yeah. gonna like look good and like, you know, everything's gotta be in its right position. And I feel like especially with like like sets for like adult uh like videos where it, they do this like really interesting thing where it's like they have a legit proper set mm -hmm. but they almost try to make it 
non-invasive because and they try and make it like not bland but i guess like it's it's pretty but it's uninteresting yeah. because, so that it doesn't actually get in the way of what you're and actually like, there for you know which is right. there'll be people though that will pay attention to the details I've, i did a video where it was in my room yeah and i i didn't realize but i had my anime posters in the wall yeah and i look at the comments Cord. and we're like oh my god did you see her wall like and, Suba <laughs> and, and mob psycho like they weren't paying attention to my scene <laughs> They were paying attention to the background of the anime posters. They're like, oh, I'm a fan now because of the posters and stuff. It's like, yo, this scene's hot, but that Kona Super poster, yes. though, fire. You should, it's so funny. Like, I, I wonder if the comments are still the same on that video, but that video is like just a meme because of my room. Right, right. So yeah. So, yeah, so again, like you kind of have to make it like non-distracting. All right. Yeah, like right rest. here. Like, like that, for this example. This is like right? a basic white couch. Like yeah. every Corn. Is either the black leather couch yeah. or the black, or the white couch. Yeah. Because of you know. There is like a weird art to it. There I is, feel. yeah. Yeah. In a court. True, that is true. <laughs> but yeah, um, I feel like we talked about a whole lot of interesting stuff, and I feel like you know. I'm hoping at least that people who watch this video get to know a little bit more about what actually goes on in the industry and are a little bit more like educated in that matter. Mm -hmm. Cause like that was kind of the whole point of making this video with you is to kind of just hear from the source of like, okay, what actually goes on in the industry? Like what's actually happening? And like, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully we can kind of start to like, not so much like, get rid of the stigmas or anything like that yeah, but at least like you know alleviate it you know a little bit you know to be like look it's not all bad you know it's not all like we're not all like cokeheads no or drug you're, addicts. you're not all drug heads <laughs> you know being forced to like have fun no. or anything like if anything from the sounds of it a lot of these women especially in the american industry want to be there and want to do what they do and love what they do like you right so yeah i feel that was like kind of really important to, i guess talk about in video um and hopefully you guys enjoy that um hey uh, you, you got anything to shout out youtube channel yeah follow me on my youtube channel it's waifu violet and i have a bunch of cool videos there where like it's not just like any court i have vlogs there but i also mm. have like cool like even background tv you know for people yeah. to watch but i want i'm the whole purpose of my youtube channel is for people to see like a human side yeah to my you know my job is my job but also like i have other interests too yeah. and that's you have relatable hobbies. i have yeah. hobbies yeah. And, yeah they can follow my youtube channel my instagram and only my fans? twitch only fans if you want to see that kind of content yeah. if not youtube is free to subscribe yeah, exactly but uh yeah hopefully you guys learn a lot about this and uh thank you again violet for thank letting me interview you you. for interviewing me and getting like a different perspective for people yeah, for your audience thank you bye guys well guys, I hope you enjoyed this interview. I certainly learned a lot and I hope you guys did as well. There's probably a lot of you wondering, you know, what was the whole point of this interview? And I'd say at the end of the day is to kind of get people to be more informed about the adult industry. Because again, there are so much different biases and misinterpretations I feel that are thrown around. So it's actually nice to hear what it's actually like and not to mention actually meeting someone who enjoys being in that industry and is proud to be in that industry. And you know what? I have nothing but respect for someone like that so big thank you to Violet for letting me interview her you can check out all the socials and her YouTube channel down in the description below and thanks for watching guys leave a like if you enjoyed also let me know in the comments below who you would like me to interview next and I appreciate you guys for watching and I'll see you all in the next one Johnny